Welcome to the Winter 2024 All-Star Draft in Rhode Island. I have our captains here. Well, captains, so we're going to have to break some news in a second. And four analysts to break down uh, who is an All-Star for this season in Rhode Island. We're going to reveal the captains, get some of their analysis, and then get to the analysts who are going to help us as we draft our two All-Star teams. I'm Joey Zacco. Thanks for watching live on YouTube as we debut this show. Uh, it is pre-recorded, but we're going to act like it's live and hopefully build some suspense here about who got voted into our All-Star game this year. We have Colin, Wyatt, Chris, and Ryan standing by. We have Brandon Whitman from the Gym Rats, and Joe Secator from Lob City are our two All-Star captains for this year. It's always kind of fun to see as the draft goes on who players pick from other teams, right, whether they know them from outside the league or not, to join them for an all-star game that is an exhibition, but is still a very fun time and, and does get a little competitive sometimes. So before we get to the draft, and let me just break down how this all works. There are eight teams in the league. We have 14 all-star spots. So our analysts here that you'll be hearing from in a second voted for these 14 all-stars that our two captains get to pick from. Okay, so they can't just pick anybody they want. It's not a free-for-all. The two captains are going to be picking from the pool of players that were voted to be an all-star okay there is some you know is everyone from is a player from each of the eight teams sorry so they did have to vote one player from each of the teams and that leaves six spots where there can be duplicates right players from the same team overlapping i think we i think we nailed it this year uh, i'll break some news i'm not an all-star go figure right uh but let's let's you know let's shortly reveal the list of all-stars kind of during the draft so unfortunately you'll have to hang out with us for the next you know 20 30 minutes to uh see who is an all-star this season but let's throw it over to brandon and then i'll i'll get to my my breaking news here on the show but brandon your first season in the league you are an all-star so there you go there's your first all-star revealed so you know as you get to draft your team and kind of being a part of the league for the first time what are the things that maybe you're looking for without saying any players names because we're trying to keep it a secret here but what types of players what you know skill sets are you looking for in an all-star game that usually is you know, more fast paced, you know, not so much defense till the end. Like, what are you looking for as you draft your team? Um, yeah, I know this season. It was definitely fun this season playing. And um, right now for this all-star game, I'm looking for some players that are athletic and done, throw some lobs here and there. And of course, I get some probably one or two shooters that can face the floor a little bit. So yeah, I know it's not going to be a lot of defense, but. I just want to make it a competitive game. So you got to have a little bit of everything. Yeah. And, and, you know, despite what people say, there is shooting. Shooting is important. You know, it, 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 there is obviously the dunks and that side of it. But as we've seen in our games and as the playoffs roll on here in our Rhode Island League, teams are hitting shots. And that, that's a huge part of, of the way the game is played in the legacy leagues. All right. So as for Joe Secator, he was planning on being here. Shout out to him. It is his Second All-Star game. He was an All-First Team member last year. He played in the game over the summer. And I, just the play that comes to mind that you've probably seen is a, is a poster on Marvin Dowdell, which was just at, like right before the halftime buzzer. Um, and they, they, you know, are buddies. So they like had a good laugh that, that Joe got him in a, in a highlight. But he'll be back in the All-Star game. He's already on his own team, Team Secator and Team Whitman. We're going to pull up the draft board in a second. Brandon, since you're the only one here and I'm drafting for Joe Secator, so go figure. All the rivalry crap, and I'm kidding, between Lob City and the halfway crooks, he leaves it to me. He didn't have a choice. He leaves it to me to draft his all-star team, right? But we're going to change the name to Team Joe. Forget Team Secator. Team Joe, because we're both Joe, and we're going to make it work. So I will, uh, I will be fair, and it's really it's my first time drafting, too, so I'm excited. So will I stick to the list that uh, Joe Secator gave me? We'll see. We'll see. We'll see how mad he is after this, after we after we draft these teams. Brandon, all right, so let's you call it before I even flip it, because I know we're on Zoom. So heads or tails for, for first pick? I'll take heads. All right, all right, here we go. You guys are going to have to trust me a little bit. All right, we got heads, and you guys are really going to have to trust me because I dropped it, but it was heads. All right, so that means Brandon Whitman gets first pick, all right, and it's just going to go like one, 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 one. So we're not going to we snake it it might get a little we'll we'll just go back and forth one 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 so team whitman is up first uh let's let's get one of these analysts in here to try to try to break this up a little bit while brandon i'm sure he already has figured this out for his first pick but um let's go let's let's go to ryan ryan you know one of the first you know you've been on a post game show so i'm not you know putting you know on the spot that way but without saying any players ryan you know your first all-star game as well what are you kind of looking for 
you know, as far as maybe the, the most important thing that these guys should be looking when they draft? There are a couple of things I think you can kind of keep in mind, um, you know, shooting is a priority. Um, a little bit of defense, I think, is still uh, something you can't really ask for. Um, you know, that's still something that's still very important. I know it's an also a game, you know, I know defense isn't really that huge uh, in games like this, but uh, overall, I think, you know, shooting defense, just transition, um, going to the hoop. And I just think like that's one of the few uh, priorities kind of, going in when you are selecting an all-star team and also chemistry too. I think that's one thing that, you know, if you don't really have like someone like with good chemistry, it's, it's not really going to help you at all. I like it. So, I mean, it sounds like, you know, point guards are huge, you know, kind of getting everybody involved a little bit. Uh, I think Brandon's ready. So Brandon with the first pick who you got in uh, this year's all-star draft. I'm going to take one of your teammates. I'm going to go with Charles Alexander. All right, so there's your first, and I got to spell his name right. He's on my own team now. Uh, Charles Alexander, the halfway crooks. It's funny, he goes first. Uh, he was, let me find his name, the All-Star Game MVP from last year. So maybe Brandon, you know, doing his homework a little bit. Uh, the first pick there for, for Team Whitman, he's, you know, an All-Star Game MVP, his second All-Star Game appearance for Charles Alexander, and, uh, you know, in his second season. So, you know, a, a repeat All-Star and a good pick. I mean, I think, you know, can can defend, can get some highlight plays, can shoot it. So uh, Charles Alexander from the Halfway Crooks is your first all-star drafted. Uh, I will stick to uh, Joe's list. So uh, Team Secator, well, Team Joe, excuse me, I should fix it on here. Let's let's do that just to, you know, make everyone a little upset. Uh, team Joe uh, in the all-star draft is uh, going to be taking Colin Burns. That was, uh, you know, who, who Joe Secator from his own team wanted. So I do have to be fair here. Uh, and that, that was his first pick. So Colin Burns from Lob City does go off the board. Uh, it is Colin's third All-Star game. And uh, he is, Colin Burns is a two times finals MVP. So kind of trying to give you some of that context here. So we have Charles Alexander and Colin Burns off the board. Let's go um, one more pick for each side. And then we'll get a couple of the analysts in here who haven't, who haven't talked yet. So, uh, and we'll kind of try to keep this moving for you guys who are watching here as well. Brandon, you're on the spot. All right. So with your team's second pick, who are you taking? Yeah, I'm going to go with a little bit of a, a shooter this time. I'm going to go with uh, Justin Tishworth. Excuse All me right. if I screwed up his name a little bit. No, and, you know, listen, we love it. So Justin Titsworth, his first All-Star game uh, is in the running for some of our end-of-season awards, and it wouldn't be an All-Star draft. It wouldn't be a podcast without a shout-out uh, to his nickname that he earned. Uh, over the summer, the milkman. We love, we love Justin, you know, calling him the milkman. He loves it. I made sure, you know, it's, it's all, it's all in good fun. There's much worse nicknames as, uh, you know, as I told Justin that, that he can be called. So I will make, so we have Charles Alexander, Justin Titsworth, and I'm going to scroll down a little bit here for you guys. You can see Brandon's already on his own team. So three players drafted there. And let me make another pick for uh, team Joe, uh, you know, I basically should coach it now at this point. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm this involved here, uh, but it is going to be another member of the halfway crooks with team Secator second pick. It's going to be Ethan Austin uh, joining uh, Joe Secator on his team. That's the second player he wanted. So, so far we're good. Everybody should be happy. I haven't had to screw anybody over yet, but we have two halfway crooks, uh, one member of Lob City joining Joe Secator from Lob City and Justin Titsworth from the regulators. Uh, this is Ethan Austin's Second All-Star game, he did play over the summer as a guest, his first All-Star game as a player in the league. Uh, so let's go to, we're going to get the other three in here right now, and then I promise I'll get Ryan back in as well. Colin first. All right, so we have our analyst Colin here. You kind of see the teams where we're at as of right now, three on each side. What do you like? What do you not like so far? And, and uh, what do you think? So I think that um, between both sides, I think that um, Brandon, he's really like the way he said before that he's really going to try and space out the four with the shooter. And I think that, you know, team second does have Ethan Austin, but his primary game isn't being that shooter like Justin is milkman. But um, Colin Burns, I think he's going to be dominant as I, he no one can really stop him in the first place. And these these first two picks is going to be a lot to handle in the paint. But uh, so far, it's definitely going to be some flashy plays from both sides, and it's going to be entertaining. Yeah, and let's go to Wyatt and Chris. I'm going to save Chris for after we do one more pick for each side. So, Wyatt, with what we have so far, 
what do you what do you think and which team do you think you know let's do it which team has the edge let's kind of cause some controversy here Joey I think your team's got the edge right now Colin it's not Graham. even my team I love it I love it but yeah it's my team now yes I mean right now it's your team uh but right now I think you got the edge Colin Burns he's a he's a dog he gets everything done he runs the paint Ethan Austin he's a great guard I mean the teams are good both teams are great a lot of good guard play on both teams Charles Alexander he's like the most ideal all-star player he's a highlight machine i mean i love both these teams but right now i think i think your team's got the edge right now listen it, whether it's a post game show the all-star draft brandon take notes that's how you suck up all right you keep it you just make sure i'm happy and uh no we'll see we'll see this week you know with our with our semi-final post game show as we preview the finals uh you guys will be watching that on on thursday so after this or tomorrow That'll be on YouTube as well. You can see more analysis and just how nice they were to the halfway crooks. But uh, Brandon, let's get your pick in the third round there. So your fourth member of, of your team, who do you got? He's a rookie. He's muted. Here we go. All right, let's try it again. <laughs> I'm going to take uh, Rian Watts. All right. So our first member of the Road Dogs, who are our four seed and in the semifinals, Rian Watts joins team Whitman. So again, more, more guard play, more athleticism, more shooting. Rion's first all-star game in his first uh, season in the league and uh, only played in, I believe, four regular season games, had a really big game in that quarterfinal uh, against All Waves, just kind of was doing a little bit of everything, rebounds, assists, blocks. Uh, and so uh, he joins team Whitman. I guess it's my team now, even though I'm sticking to his list. So Secator will be happy uh, with, with me. But with the third pick for uh, my team now, uh, no, for Team Secator, we're going to go with Mark Washington. Uh, so Rion's teammate from the Road Dogs, the second member of the Road Dogs, selected in his first season, in his first All-Star game. Um, yeah, I mean, played in seven games, averaging 16.6 points per game, Mark Washington. And really, I think one of the keys for uh, the Road Dogs as they get ready to take on Lob City, by the time you're watching this, that game will have already have happened. But... Uh, the uh, the Road Dogs in Lob City. Mark Washington, a huge part and a, a big part of the Road Dogs as they look to make a run to the finals. All right, Chris, last one. I saved, you know, Chris for last here. Uh, so far, we got four members drafted. What do you think, Chris, so far? Who's been taken? I think both teams are looking pretty good. I think the biggest thing for Team Joe is going to be the chemistry with Gon and Joe Secator. Probably from the best team in the whole league. That's going to be a big one-two punch. I think Tim, Team Whitman is looking good, though, too. Like Brandon was saying, trying to space the floor out. You have a couple good guards, and then you're probably one of the top players in the league with Charles. So it's going to be a really competitive game. And it's going to be interesting to see two teammates go off against each other in the All-Star game. So but both teams have a lot of have a lot of pros on their team, so it's going to be good. Oh, yeah. A lot of firepower. That is for sure. All right. Uh, we're going to go to Ryan after you make another pick. So let's let's get another pick for each team here. And I will say, this is where I get to start making some GM decisions. Let me just put it that way. For, for, so this is going to get good. Uh, so, Brandon, your fourth selection for Team Whitman. Who you got? Excuse me if I uh, mispronounce his last name, but Nicholas Montanino. Montanino. I mean, it, and it, it very well could be pronounced that way. We're going, we're going Montanino, but I love it. Oop, let me type this in here. Uh, so that'll be the first member of the All Waves. And that'll be another bigger body. So there you go. So kind of, I, I like it. I think that was a good pick. As we kind of saw, it was funny. We did the Connecticut draft probably close to a month ago now. Uh, and it was funny, you know, that some of the analysis was my team's a little small. Even though there's no defense, it's kind of nice to have someone down there who maybe can protect the rim. Um, we'll kind of see what Ryan thinks about, about the, uh, the size that, that Nicholas Montanino brings in the second. All right, I'm sticking to the list. And then at the, the, the fifth and sixth picks really, I guess, will be up to me. So we'll, we'll kind of have to see how this goes here. So the fourth pick for Team Secator, we're going to go Luis Ramirez. Speaking of a little, you know, someone who, who does it all here. Um, Luis Ramirez from the Air Mambas, his first All-Star game. I forgot to mention Nicholas Montanino in his first All-Star game. A lot of first-time All-Stars, but the first member of the Air Mambas. So there you go. We have some new teams kind of coming in here. The Air Mambas get, get at least one player. The all waves get at least one player. Let's get back over to Ryan, who hasn't even gotten to break down these teams yet. I know kind of trying to get everybody in here and keep it moving. Ryan, we're almost at the end here, buddy. So, like, what do you like from these teams so far? 
I think what Brandon is doing is amazing. You know, he's got size, you know, Alexander, he's got money, you know, uh, prioritizing defense. I think what Team Joe has for drafting Ramirez, I think is a great counter as well. You know, you got two big bodies, um, you know, great two big centers. And I think that's kind of the key here. You know, you got shooters, you know, you got, you got defense, I think Brandon's doing a great job here with his drafting. Um, you know, he's got, you know, I think Monino is going to be one of those steals in one of those late round picks. And I think that's, and I, and I love the pick. I think it's a great pick. All right. He's had a, he's had a great season. Let me see if I can, and this is of course me preparing, but 17.6 points per game, 9.4 rebounds for Nicholas Mononino in the regular season. So, uh, you know, a, a very good regular season. And was a big part, like we've talked about, of that always team kind of making that run and, and, and rattling off those wins. All right, Brandon, we're going to keep it moving. Then we can do a little bit of analysis at the end as well. So who do you got for your fifth pick for Team Whitman? I'm going to take Eric Browler. All right, so that'll be uh, Eric Fowler from Unaffiliated. So Unaffiliated's first uh, player here selected in our All-Star Draft, his first All-Star game as he is a rookie, and he's third in the league in, in points scored and in, in points per game this regular season, 25.6. And I know he averaged a ton of rebounds as well, 14.6 rebounds a game. That's not an, that's the stat. That's the actual stat. Uh, a huge part of that Unaffiliated team. Stacking up some size. All right, I will be honest. That was who I was leaning towards. Uh, so now things get a little interesting. I will go uh, for Team Joe because, uh, to be honest, just so you know, we're all clear here, Joe's list is run out. He, he gave me some players earlier today who he had his eye on. They've all been selected. So now, like I said, it's really up to me. I am going to take uh, Tommy McSparren here, uh, who is the second member of the regulators to be selected and you know i think kind of fits in with this team and i don't i mean i'm doing enough talking here trust me but i was going to go with fowler in all, in all fairness just to kind of get some more of that size mcsparron's one of the bigger players who kind of plays down low and has been a huge part of that regulators team um but yeah i'm excited to kind of see him against his teammate justin titsworth too that may have been really why i did it i like kind of seeing you know teammates not on the same team uh, let's get these last picks in and then we're going to get every analyst and we'll kind of end it with Brandon here as he kind of, you know, gets to talk some crap without the other captain being here. But so Brandon, your last pick, uh, Tommy in his first all-star game as well. I have some stats after we'll, we'll go over, but, um, yeah, there's two players left. So, you know, you pick one and I, I don't even get to pick. I'm, I'm, I'm with the last one. So who, who are you taking with your last pick? I'm going to take your, your uh, another one of your teammates, Charles Corey. All right. Excuse so, me on the last name. I that's all right. Wrong. That's all right. Charles Correa. Uh, th hey, listen, we had Devin Devon Pina because we couldn't get his name right. And now we know it's it's Devin. And I used to call him Devon. So it, it's all good. So Charles Correa from the halfway crooks, the third member of the crooks to be selected. And we'll kind of go over and the analysts can even back up. I mean, the three of them average 20 points a game for the second best team in the league. So um, all star wise. And as far as entertainment value, I think it's there. Uh, and that leaves... Not Mr. Irrelevant by any by any uh, stretch, but Josh Depina from All Waves. So they also get two two picks in here, and those are the full rosters for the All Star Game this year. So everyone's been selected. We're gonna get some analysis here in a second, but just to give you a breakdown, that'll be Josh Depina in his first All Star Game and Charles Correa in his second All Star Game. We have ten first time All Stars uh, in this year's game, so a lot of new faces. So we'll kind of see how that goes. And I already mentioned the halfway crooks have three players represented. Every team does have at least one. We have Lob City with two on Team Secator. The Regulators got split up, but they also had two. The Road Dogs have two, and Mark Washington and Rion Watts on separate teams. And we just talked about the All Waves getting two representatives in this year's game. All right, let's kind of work it backwards from who we haven't heard from, and we'll end it with Brandon. But those are your all-star teams. We'll go back to Colin. Colin, now that you have the full teams, not that you have to make a pick. I mean, you can if you'd like. Um, but which team do you think has the edge? And let's let's kind of use that, you know, whether it's who do you think will win, which team has the advantage. And again, you can only play four of these guys at a time. So kind of that rotation is going to be interesting. But but Colin, what do you like and what stands out? 
So just by looking at both teams, I think it's going to be a really fun and entertaining game to watch. But I do think that Team Joe has the edge by a little bit just because due to the team chemistry. Although I'd have to say Team Whitman, I think his fifth and sixth picks are really beneficial for his team because I think Eric Fowler should have went way ahead. And I think he's going to be a second rounder. And it surprised me to see him drop as far as he did. But I really hope that it's going to be a close game towards the end. We can see, you know, teammates really start to play intense defense on each other. And I, I hope it comes down to the last shot because that'll be a great game to watch. Well, a couple things there before we keep going. So um, as far as the last shot, we do have the Elam ending in effect. So the way that works really quickly during our all-star game, we have three quarters that are normal, 10 minute quarters, running clock, same that we do in the legacy leagues. And that fourth quarter, there's no time. So whatever team is winning after the third quarter, let's say it's 50 to 40, right? Hopefully it's more than that. But we're going to add 16 points before the start of the fourth quarter to the winning team's score. So in this scenario, it would be 66. And that is the target score for both teams to get to to end the game. So instead of playing time, you're playing to a score. And what that does is there's no following. You don't actually want to follow. It means that someone has to hit a shot to win it. Like a, a, a basket has to be scored for the game to end, whether it's the 66, 67th point, you can go over. The, the, the total but it's the first team kind of like they do in the basketball tournament that they have in the summer where the teams play very similar there's no time it's the first team to that target score we had a half court shot win it last year uh cody crawford hit it who is not in the all-star game for the first time ever so i want to shout out him he's been in all seven all-star games before this had a little bit of a down year i think he was a little banged up as well so um you know shout out to him as a seven-time all-star who uh, is not one of our all-stars uh, this year. So, um, yeah, but he's the one who hit our first Elam Ender uh, to end the all-star game from half court last year, uh, in the summer of our all-star game. Let's go to Wyatt. Uh, back to the teams here. What do you like? And uh, if you want to pick my team again, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think you lost it towards the end. Uh, Eric Fowler, great pick. Charles Correa, another great pick. I think those guys fell a lot farther than I expected. I mean, but I, I'm looking forward to the matchup in the paint a little bit. Luis Ramirez against Nicholas Montanino. I mean, that's going to be a great matchup. I think the game, the both teams are very, like, well matched up. I mean, Tommy McSparren, he can play with any team. He's a player you can fit anywhere. I mean, both these teams I love, and I think it's going to be a great game. Oh, yeah, for sure. And then, Brandon, did that Elon Mending make sense? Right. Yeah. All right. Cool. Hopefully. Yes. Yes, it is. Well, when you when you see it, it makes sense. Trust me. I got some looks, but it it we're playing to a target score, which is trust me, a lot more entertaining. Really, in this game, what we've seen over the years is just who is going to care. And I know that's a strong word to use. Like these guys obviously always care and and will play and put on a good show. We saw it in Connecticut, where like you know Reggie Stewart was still kind of battling it out with the team that his team lost to in the semifinals they were like going one on one for stretches there like trying to like outdo each other so which of these players and I'll I'll throw it to Chris before we end it with Ryan I'll throw it to Chris you know which player is your favorite I'm really going to put him on the spot for all-star game MVP because that's kind of what it comes down to right we pick that after the game you know who's MVP of an exhibition game but you know, some guys just come and hang out and have a good time. They'll hit some shots and kind of, you know, try to assist other players. And some guys are like, no, no, I'll, I'll take, you know, give me 20 shots. Like, I'm, I'm going for this here. I'm trying to, like, win this game. So, Chris, who's your favorite for All-Star Game MVP? For All-Star MVP, it's tough, but I think Eric Fowler. I think he – I think he he's on a better team. <laughs> and I think that that team complements each other well. I think that they have a lot of forwards and guards, and he kind of fits in – in the middle there. So I think he's going to be able to get both a lot of points off a lot of rebounds because, you know, he gets a lot of rebounds. We you know he has the most rebounds in the league. So he's gonna definitely going to get a lot of second chance points, but he's also going to hopefully help his teammates out. I think he will do that. So I think he's going to be having a good game. I like it. And I think rebounding is huge. That's one way to do it, right? You know, no one's going to make every shot. So if, if he's one of those players that will definitely be in position to get some easier points that way. Ryan, same question. I like it. Uh, and, you know, of course, Secretor is not even here to say he is planning on winning All-Star Game MVP, which I'm sure he is. Uh, but, Ryan, who's your favorite for MVP in this one? This can go either way. So, I, you know, Secretor could be for Team Joe. Um, but 
you know, Alexander and Whitman or Correa could be in one of those two. I love the Correa pick. I think this is one of the, you know, steals as well of these of this draft. Um, for him being six was uh a little bit I expect him to go a little bit higher, but at the end of the day, um, you know, he's an all star. He was gonna be somewhere. Um, this was a great pick though by Brandon. Let's get to him. Brandon, I know you didn't have much, you know, to go off of because the other captain wasn't here. So hopefully, you know, from what it sounds like, I let Joe Secator down. So I very well might have, you know, with those last two picks, I might, you know, totally mess this whole thing up. I don't think so. I have a lot of faith in uh, in, in Team Joe getting the win here. But, you know, Brandon, how do you think it fell? I mean, now we can actually talk about, you know, your strategy as far as some players, you know, you were looking at when you had the list initially. You know, just what was the strategy and kind of did it go according to plan? Uh, yeah, my uh, my strategy before this, I because I, you showed me the li- list like right before this, I thought of some of the facts. I needed a couple shooters, I needed a couple of guys that like to dunk the ball, run out in transition and stuff. I also needed a few big guys to get rebounds. So I think my team went exactly how I planned it. So I'm I'm proud of my team and I'm looking forward to this game. I like it, and I think some of the matchups. I mean, you know, Charles Alexander guarding Colin Burns. We always love that. You know, whether it's, you know, Rion Watts, kind of Mark and Ethan Austin like he has during the season. I love that as well. Um, yeah, and I mean, you know, Brandon, we haven't talked about Brandon, but, you know, in his first All-Star con- game, kind of feeling it out. And, uh, you know, he had a great year on the Gym Rats as well as their lone representative. So uh, getting to play with some of these other guys, there is a method to the, to the madness here. And I think, you know, getting to play with some other players in the league when you come back next year, it's a lot more fun to then kind of play against them and, for real right? When you were on the same team as them, you know, in the all-star game. So it is a very fun night. Our all-star night is Tuesday, April 2nd, Team Secator. It will be switched back by then. Team Secator against Team Whitman in our all-star game at nine o'clock on April 2nd. We're going to kick off the night with our three-point contest and dunk contest. So stay tuned for who is in those contests. And spoiler, it's not me. I didn't make enough threes, dang it. And the analyst, even though I'm a champion, let's just get that on the record, even though it's the end of the show. They didn't vote for me. So this is how you know nothing's rigged. My team never wins, and I'm not even in the damn three-point contest this year. Thanks a lot, guys. But we do have some great shooters and some good dunkers as well, ready to put on a show there. And then we'll see who wins our uh, winner 2024 All-Star Game. Uh, thank you for watching on YouTube. Thanks to our analysts and for Brandon and, and Joe for, for uh, drafting the teams and for doing this and being a part of this. Um, appreciate you guys taking the time. And thank you to everyone who's still watching at this point. I know it's a long Long half hour, but uh, those are your winner 2024 All-Stars. Stay tuned for more announcements throughout the week as we get ready for the finals and to see who is going to be crowned a champion this winter in Rhode Island. Thanks for watching and keep an eye on the website and everything else for more info about All-Star Night.